Welcome to Crown Imperial Fritillaria watercolor painting tutorial. As real flowers tend to fade away, we can paint them and keep in memory forever. So look at this curved leaf. I still can see it. First, I need to prepare paper. This painting will be slightly bigger than usual. Line drawing is transferred on original paper and now with mechanical pencil 0 0.3. Very lightly I'm outlining again all the smallest details, everything is important. This is the size of an outline with an elastic eraser removing excess amount of graphite off the paper, covering paper before mixing watercolor so everything stays clean. I have my color palette, watercolors, clean water and we can start mixing watercolors. For leaf painting I will be using ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, alizarin crimson, sap green, indian yellow and indigo. We can begin painting process with round synthetic brush. Be sure that your water is clean after mixing watercolors, applying very small amount of water and starting with middle leaf that we have in front of our composition, applying watercolor mix of sap green, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson and lemon yellow. It is more saturated, much warmer green mix and a little touch, teeny tiny touch of indigo, transparent yellow and alizarin crimson on the lower part which will be completely in dark and shadow. But now we're painting transparently and with finer brush stroke I'm applying on the upper part of the sleeve leaving middle part light. You notice how the middle part of the sleeve has been left lighter, left white as this paper and I'm taking ultramarine blue and lemon yellow mix which is much cooler watercolor green mix and apply with tiny brush strokes in the middle part. Everything is very light at this part. Slowly, this is really work where you need to move slowly, better much slower rather than faster. There are so many fine lines, very thin looking leaves and we want to leave this beautiful dancing crown for this flower as it is in the reference. Now painting this beautiful front leaf which is curved and we want to make this leaf look like it is curving, that it is round. So we need to establish here tonal values. From the reference we can see that the upper part is lighter towards the light source and it's cooler. And the lower part is curving inside the composition. It's darker, it's warmer. That's what I'm leaving upper part ultramarine blue and lemon yellow. Smoothing and the lower part is sap green, ultramarine blue, lemon yellow. Carefully with the brush, tip of the brush, I'm smoothing them both together, but still visible separation of cool and warm and dark and light. This leaf is wider, so I'm starting with water layer with round synthetic brush and then apply watercolors to the slightly moist surface. And when I'm applying water, as you can see, I'm moving watercolors. They are not moving on their own. So if the water is too much, then the watercolors start to float in all directions by themselves. But as I apply small amount of water, watercolors stay where I put them and it's just a matter of much easier. I can push with my brush much easier. 
than if it would be completely dry surface. Constantly checking reference for guidance as everything is visible there, patiently moving forward with fine brush strokes, adding watercolors. And this is the part where you just keep adding layers, but still transparent. I still have watercolors that we pre-mixed in the beginning. And I'm uploading my brush with small amount of watercolors and painting next layers. Now I'm adding this warmer green mix, sap green and Indian yellow, to some other leaves that I noticed that I need a little bit more this yellowish green, especially in the shadow area because shadow area is much warmer and I want to keep the light area cooler where is more ultramarine blue. Going over all leaves, adding new layers, new brush strokes, and constantly checking reference for guidances. Now is the time that I'm patiently adding layers on and on to make this more saturated and realistic as it is in the reference. I'm not aiming for 100% accuracy, but still all the guidances I have are in the reference. There are a little darker spot behind flower head. There's the little tiny edge of the leaf that is completely in the shadow, so I'm painting it quite dark at this point. Careful around the flower. Here's a really slow and accurate work with the tip of the brush. I'm taking transparent yellow small amount of transparent yellow with round synthetic brush going over few of the leaves to make them slightly warmer and yellowish i see in the reference that some leaves are more yellowish than others again when you are adding some watery wash don't do that on the whole area Look carefully at the reference and notice which ones are really in need of this yellowish layer. It doesn't mean that when you are adding something that you need to add this to the to all leaves. And I'm also when I'm going over with this yellowish layer, I'm not going over the lighter part because those parts are This part is all about flowers of fritillaria covering my painting with paper towel, applying water to color palette. For the flower head area, I'm using Indian yellow, Sennelier red, perlin maroon, perlin violet, and indigo. You can use your pigment, experiment with pigments that you already have in your paint box. Uncovering painting, everything is clean. I will also add manganese violet to my color palette. I will be using this pigment on the lighter areas, which we see on the very top of flower heads. Taking round synthetic brush, starting with water layer, be sure that your water is clean after mixing watercolors, and applying base layer Indian yellow, clean Indian yellow. You can use cadmium yellow or any other yellow that you have in your color box. Manganese violet on the top of this petal. And here I will take finer tip brush because this area is so narrow and I'm more in control with the finer tip brush. Everything at this stage uh, will have transparent layers. I will be building this saturation of the flower gradually and with layers. Most of pigments that will be used is Indian Yellow, Sennelier Red, Perlin Maroon. Go slow with your watercolor mixes. Yes, these flowers look saturated and dark, but there are some very interesting areas on the petals, on some petals, that are lighter and appear even violet. 
zoom in closer your reference, study each petal. We need to make the saturated flower look realistic, so we need to look for tonal values, some differences in color tones. While other petals are drying, I can return to the first petal and paint very fine lines of pearl and maroon mix. and pearl and violet for the upper part where we have a darker but that darker spot we will be painting gradually full tutorial of this flower is available on my patreon if you want to level up your watercolor painting skills and enjoy the process consider subscribing to my online art school on patreon I'm teaching basics of realistic watercolor painting, give monthly feedbacks on students' work and available more than 180 real-time tutorials. These tutorials are available for all painting levels. Applying layers and layers of transparent watercolors. Noticing slightly slightest changes in color tones and tonal values to create movement in these flower heads. Leaving some areas lighter and adding a little bit more darker. This middle petal is now appearing more three-dimensional because I'm leaving the left side lighter, as you can see, and the right side darker. And it's important for this flower head to leave the upper, upper part of the flower head unpainted. We can see from the reference, and I'm applying there now manganese violet, that those areas are lighter. Even they look like they're dark, but if we take a closer look to the reference, at the reference we will notice that those areas are, they, the light is shining on them and that way they, they are much lighter. So I'm leaving that part unpainted from yellow. Loading my brush with indigo and pearl and violet mix. Again, slowly, lightly, and with small brush strokes applying that darker area that we see on fritillaria flower heads. Slowly building that contrast and we are getting that three-dimensional look. We are building this form For this particular flower head, I'm leaving bigger areas of lighter space, not covering everything with Indian yellow, because this flower head is the lightest one. It is more exposed to the light source, and we need to build this contrast with other flower heads, so this one is the lightest one. Painting with transparent layers and slowly building layers for this particular flower head. 
noticing changes in my reference still after painting more than one hour I'm constantly checking reference and no matter how long I will paint how much time I will spend on particular painting I will be looking in reference because everything is there and the more I look the more details I start to notice details which I didn't notice in the now I have color palette still from my when I was painting leaves I'm taking that and notice that this particular leaf needs more darkness because it's going behind this flower head and it is much darker in that area my recommendation don't wash your color palettes you can use those watercolors for the finishing part I'm looking at the whole composition and I notice that some petals need more yellow I'm adding clean Indian yellow to my color palette and with round synthetic brush doing a wash of this color tone to some petals notice that not all flower head petals have that much greener brighter orangey look some have but some don't painting stem with a mix from flower head which is indigo together with pearl and violet transparently and carefully building layers and saturation of this stem stem and composition is also important give them as much love as you give for flowers it doesn't matter that it maybe doesn't look like beautiful like flowers but it's still very important area in the composition As this part is completely dedicated to stem area, I want to show you the approach I give for the stem area. It's not a quick part of the painting process. It's not a, some kind of shortcut in the whole composition. Stem is also important. It doesn't matter even if it's big like this particular stem, it can be also a very thin stem but you still need to pay extra attention this is so often forgotten zone in composition again applying those tiny tiny brush strokes and paint my paint is super transparent at this point because i'm also going over the lighter part on a piece of paper i want to show you the lightness of my tiny brush strokes because when I'm applying them on a darker stem you maybe don't see how light actually my brush strokes and watercolor mix is so I'm applying these little brush strokes and as you can see the layer of watercolor the transparency is super light it's not as saturated as the stem it is at, at this at this moment it is much lighter Let's take a closer look at my brush strokes and how the layers are applied to this stem carefully and transparently moving forward taking round synthetic brush and a mix of pearl and violet together with Sennelier red transparent amount of watercolors and few wide and long brush strokes over the shadow part of the stem adding a little touch of red just a little notion to get this glow not just uh, indigo and pearl and violet but also a little zooming out and looking at the whole composition at the whole painting together i have my color palettes from part one and part two i want to add some contrast for leaf area and flower heads 
This is the part where you can actually paint on and on for many, many hours, just making it more and more perfect. I really enjoyed painting of this crown and pearl fritillaria flower. Hope you too, hope you gave it a try and thank you for being here. Hope you learned something new and are enjoying this beautiful world of watercolor art. Thank you and see you in my next tutorials. Bye bye!